So in my previous video, I showed you how to build this induction heater. And at the end of the video, the only thing I hadn't worked out was a power supply. But thanks to a comment left by one of my awesome viewers, that problem is now solved. They pointed out this power supply I have here. Of all things, this is a Huawei power supply. And that's because this is designed to be used in cell phone towers to charge uh, battery backups. Now this power supply puts out 53.5 volts at a whopping 56 amps. We're talking 3 kilowatts of power output. Absolutely incredible. And do you want to know how much I paid for it? Only 35 US dollars. And it was brand new, sealed in a box. Now you might be wondering, well for that value, uh, are there any catches? And yes, to be honest, there are a couple, but we can work around those. The first problem is this power supply doesn't have any practical ways of connecting uh, cables to the input and output connections. And that's because this is designed to have a socket at the cell phone tower site that the power supply just um, plugs into. So we have to get creative to hook cables up to this thing. The second problem is we have to pull down a couple of the pins at the rear down to ground to actually get the output of the power supply to switch on. So in this video we're going to cover all those topics and I'm going to show you how I prepped this power supply for use with my induction heater. So let's get into it. Have you ever found yourself situated in a paddock full of cows and need to order circuit boards? Yeah me neither. But if I did, I would use this video's sponsor, JLC PCB. Five circuit boards cost as little as $2. They offer fast production time and with a multitude of design options, you're only limited by your imagination. Ordering is as simple as going to jlcpcb.com, uploading your Gerber files and choosing your design preferences. You can also choose any colour solder mask at no additional cost. And if you're new to designing circuit boards, then check out my KiCad circuit board series to get you started. Look, look Daisy, free circuit boards. The first thing on the to-do list is to remove two metal tabs that partially cover the underside of the PCB. First remove the top cover. With the top cover removed, let's take a quick look inside the PSU. Since this is a commercial product designed to be operated 24-7, I expected to see high quality components and I'm not disappointed. They have used top quality brands such as Nichicon and Chemicon. If you look closely you'll see a few temperature probes here and there as well. So I'd imagine this PSU has quite a few safety features you wouldn't find in your average PSU. The power density for this size is very impressive. The fact this relatively small PSU can output 3 kilowatts of power is really quite impressive. Right, back to work. Next unplug the fan connector. Now the bottom cover can be removed and the metal tabs were removed with the use of a hacksaw. With that done now the PSU can be reassembled. Now the next task is to figure out a method to connect cables to the output tabs on the PCB. You might be wondering why I don't just simply solder wires directly onto the PCB. And while I could do that, it's not very safe to do so. With the high current output of the PSU, I would run the risk of melting the solder and having the cable break free. So I had to find an alternative solution.
as you can see the AC input connections are very close together so the copper tabs had to be trimmed to fit. I carefully drilled 3mm holes through the copper tabs and PCB. The holes were drilled as close to the edge of the PCB as possible to avoid removing too much of the PCB pad that we're trying to connect to. I didn't drill a hole through the earth tab as there appears to be copper traces underneath that tab that I didn't want to risk shorting to the earth pin. To temporarily power the PSU, I connected up a power cable with an inline fuse. For my safety and yours, make sure to cover the AC input connectors with insulation tape. I'll connect my meter to the DC output terminals. As an added layer of protection, I'd recommend plugging your PSU into an RCD or similar while you're working on it. Well, the power is on, but there's a problem. The output is only a smidging over 3 volts. So what's going on here? Well, this PSU needs a couple pins pulled down to ground to switch on the output to full voltage. In the description, I'll include a download link to this diagram detailing what pins should be connected to ground and so on. Ok time to try again, and bingo we now have the full 53 volts DC. Now at this point in the video the power supply is all ready to go as is, you can use it to power an induction heater like I am, or anything else for that matter. Uh, but I wanted to explore the possibility of changing the output voltage. And I'm browsing online, I found a seller on Teo Bayo that sells this neat little circuit board. You connect it up to four pins on the power supply, and it gives you the flexibility to adjust the output voltage from 41 to 58 volts, and change the current limit between 0 to 60 amps. So let's check out this little cool gadget. In the description you'll find a link to this listing on Teo Bayo. If you haven't heard of this before, just think of it like a Chinese version of eBay. On it, someone has made this small circuit board that connects to the CAN bus pins on our PSU, which allows anyone to adjust the voltage and current settings. The only problem is, at the moment, the seller doesn't ship to my country. To get around this issue, I used a service called Teo Bayo Focus. Basically how the service works is they will buy a product from Teo Bayo on your behalf, and send the product to you anywhere in the world for a small fee. And that's exactly what I did to buy mine. The circuit uses a 7805 voltage regulator to feed the circuit a constant 5 volts. 
However, I'll be tapping into the 5 volt rail that is already existing on the power supply, so I'll have to remove the voltage regulator from the circuit. With the regulator removed, all that's needed is to connect pins 1 and 3 together using a piece of wire. Keep in mind the circuit doesn't have any sort of voltage regulation on the board, so only supply a regulated 5 volts to it or you'll risk blowing something up. Near the rear of the PSU you'll find the small IC with numbers 1, 2 and 3 printed just above. Pin 3 is plus 5 volts and pin 1 is ground. With that done, the last thing to do is to connect the two CAN communication wires to the PSU. Before you connect up the control board, switch on the PSU and verify you have a regulated 5 volt power supply and the polarity is correct. If it all looks good, switch off the power supply and connect the control board. Pressing the dial twice, the red LED flashes indicating we are in voltage adjustment mode. Pressing another two times, the blue LED flashes indicating we are in current adjustment mode. With the PSU finished, I moved on to designing an enclosure.
So my next job is to mount the power supply in the enclosure, work out some input and output terminals, and also uh, I'd like to add an amp meter and volt meter so I can monitor the power output. Uh, but sadly, all the products I've ordered uh, are currently stuck in transit and they're probably not gonna show up to early next year. So that will have to be in the next video, which if you wanna watch that when it comes out, you know where that subscribe button is. Thanks to all my Patreons for supporting me through this year. And also, thank you to all my viewers for liking, commenting, subscribing, and all that good stuff. I hope that everyone has a fantastic time over the holiday period and enjoys a well-deserved rest. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.